Rudy, I think it's standard medicine to, uh, uh, to understand that our emotional states can affect our physical states in terms of hormonal, the immune system, etc. But do you see uh, consciousness and perhaps a broader understanding of consciousness of also being involved in the psychosomatic relationship between the mind and the body? So let's start with the, the basic fact that with your mind and what you are simply thinking or intending or imagining, you've changed physically the neurochemistry and the genetic activity in your brain. We know that's the case, right? You can simply say, I want to recall a sunset I saw it on vacation and your visual cortex is activated as you see that sunset. That's mind over brain. So if you can do that, if, you, if we know the brain is this highly flexible plastic organ, remodeling and reshaping its neural networks and memory maps all the time, and they reshape simply with just what you think and with your intention, you have an intention to say, I want to be a better person today. Your, your neurochemistry and genetics changes in response to your mind. That's psychosomatic. It's not for disease though, it's for who I am. Yeah. How, I, how do I behave in the everyday world? How do I, what's my perspective in the everyday world? Now, can that then be translated to disease? Uh, that's more difficult. Disease is tough. Can you cure your Alzheimer's disease with your mind? Well, you know, studying Alzheimer's, I see it as a very formidable foe and I have to respect it and say, I don't think so. But maybe someday when we're a bit more evolved and we can more naturally control, or not control, but guide, instruct, lead our neurochemistry and genetics with our mind, maybe someday we'll prevent Alzheimer's from occurring in the first place when we learn more about how lifestyle interacts with pathology and the disease. We're not there yet. In understanding how the mind affects the brain, whether it's the sunset or, or whether it's uh, uh, some, some disease, what are the components, when you say the mind, what does that mean? Because uh, most neuroscientists would say the mind is just the sum total of the output of the brain. So you're really saying the same thing, that the, the brain is changing the brain. It's the mind and the brain are a self-organizing system. The same way, Combined. Yeah, the same way the brain creates the mind, in the self-organizing system, or what's called a recursive system, if the brain creates the mind, the mind must in turn control and create the brain. You don't get away with anything in, in the universe and in biology. If a gene makes a protein, that protein in some way down, down, down uh, stream, that protein made by the gene is going to control the activity of the gene. That's how you get natural balance in biology and probably natural balance in all physical systems, self-organization. Anything you think as a person, any thought you create is going to come back to then control you. Okay, that's, it's just, it's just a, a basic rule of balance in the universe. So if you apply that to the brain and mind, anybody who says the mind is just a product of the brain must, according to the rules of self-organization, say then the brain is then a product of the mind. It's, and it's a, a large feedback loop. But in that large feedback loop, you don't need anything outside the physicalist world. You don't need any non-physical consciousness of any kind. Well, all you need is an explanation of... The, of what those sensations and qualia are in the mind that you can recall and how, I mean, you can't take for granted how they exist. Right. We, you know, we do. We just take for granted that you can recall the most complex emotions and feelings of your life, whether they're the day your, your child was born and the intense joy you felt. You, you can actually recall that joy. How the, heck, how the heck do you store that in the brain? We just don't know. So I, so as the brain's creating these these, the ability to have those experiences, those experiences have to also be recalled. We have a pretty good idea in neuroscience of how the brain recalls those experiences. We don't know how those experiences are cataloged and stored in fat, protein, and water. We just, we just don't know yet. So I, I think that in terms of the mind, these are the, the products of consciousness. So I like to think of us as, at the very roots of ourselves, at our soul, as, as just pure awareness. One with God is pure awareness. And if, if, all, if everything starts with just pure awareness, awareness must be aware of something, and it can only be aware of itself. That's all there is. 
Yeah, you, you've now you've now taken me two steps. Too I'm sorry. Far. I, 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 I'm now aware of one with like God to and all of that. I like these together. I, um, you know when I think about them. Uh, uh, yeah, but is is that some uh, some uh, artificial thing that you're doing, or do you believe there's a reality out there that you're connecting into? I, I believe it at, at the very root, we're just awareness. I don't I don't personally believe in a physical world. Okay, as I tap a table. Um, for me, believing that there are physical solid things floating around in some big magic house called the universe, and then it ends, and then there's infinity and nothingness, is like believing in Santa Claus. I, and I firmly believe that someday the, they'll look back at us and they'll say, just like we look back and said people believed the earth was flat, we're, we're much bigger fools today when they say they used to believe that they were like little physical trinkets and things floating around in this magical a domain called the universe and they, they actually existed as solid little things that banged into each other but then there was nothing besides that it's much much easier to fathom a universe of consciousness which is produced as awareness finds an object in itself so as awareness becomes aware of itself which is all it can do that's all there is consciousness is created we use our nervous systems our brains to do that where a self-organizing system of consciousness is becoming more and more complex, more intelligence, more and more dense through the timeline to become more and more sophisticated vehicles of delivering and interpreting consciousness as awareness becomes aware of itself. I see the brain and the mind as one feedback loop in that cycle. We describe it with physical terms because we don't know how else to do it. But that's different from saying the physical things we describe in our models actually exist and bang into each other somehow in some magic house called the universe. I just don't believe that.